Okay. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Hello. Oh, let me introduce you real quick. Yep. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to a another edition of ZK Study Club. Uh, today, we're happy to welcome uh, Ivo Kubias, and he's going to be talking about uh, some of his recent work at uh, Consensus Canark. And I'm excited about this session because usually we focus on a paper, and in, in this uh, in this particular instance, I think we're going to be talking about work that's very applied uh, to real world deployed systems. And so, very excited about that. And, and to have Evo here to share some of that work with us. So Evo, uh, over to you. Yep. Thanks, Alex. So hi, I'm Evo Gubias. I I work as a research engineer at at, at Knark. And so um, uh, a bit less than two years ago, when I joined Knark, I I was asked to to implement non-native arithmetic in uh, like in Knark. And uh, so like essentially, this presentation is uh, like I'm going to introduce like. What we did and uh, like why we did some things what we did and uh, like maybe there like there are some useful useful techniques also for for others to uh, to use so like uh, as said it's uh, it's uh, it's rather applied so there may be a few more uh, let's say a uh, uh, a few novelties but like uh, mostly it is taking things from like existing uh, like existing papers and like trying to implement uh, implement them so <clears throat> So when we like when we are talking about snarks, uh, so uh, like usually, like usually we work over uh, some let's say pairing friendly uh, elliptic curve, and uh, like uh, and the operations are defined on uh, on the scalar field uh, like of the uh, of the curve. So meaning that uh, so any kind of arithmetic what we do like it uh, uh, like it is done in the, in the field and so we like if you do the multiplication like if it overflows let's say the the, the scalar field then like uh, then we well, then we like the, take the uh, then we reduce it by the let's say the, the native field and uh, like we get uh, we get we get the uh, uh, result so we have to define let's say the the circuit as operations on on this uh, native field uh, and uh, like after we have defined the circuit, so uh, like we usually like we arithmeticize the circuit like into like some kind of uh, representation. At some point, uh, we turn uh, let's say this uh, representation into uh, some let's say some some polynomials. And then what the prover has to do, uh, the prover has to show that uh, let's say some relations between like these polynomials uh, they hold. So uh, for example, like if we multiply the polynomials, then like we get the resulting polynomial. And uh, and uh, yeah, this is it. So, uh, so like uh, let's say like if the circuits are big, uh, then uh, uh, so if the circuits are big, then it also means that the, like the, that the polynomials themselves are 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 quite big. So the polynomials are, are like are of degree like uh, they they may be of degree like several several millions. Uh, and so it uh, like it would be like really infe like infeasible like to, for the prover to send uh, let's say the the whole poly polynomial over to the verifier uh, like to verify that uh, let's say this uh, this relation solved. So we use uh, something called uh, let's say uh, polynomial commitment schemes. Uh, and in that case, what the prover does is that instead of sending over the polynomials, the prover just sends the commitments to these polynomials, and then the verifier can ask, uh, please like please evaluate this polynomial at some particular point and send me send me the result. And like if we have this uh, polynomial commitment scheme, uh, then like we can do it like very efficiently. And uh, like especially like if we work in this uh, something called pairing friendly uh, elliptic curve group, then uh, then we can have like very efficient uh, polynomial uh, polynomial commitment scheme. So like essentially the opening is uh, is is a single group element, and this also makes uh, like the, the snarks like really 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 uh, efficient. Or let's say it makes the verifier work like really efficient. But it uh, we we are we are still uh, like we are still left like with the problem that uh, let's say the prover has to compute let's say the re relations between these polynomials. So uh, like if we have let's say a polynomial of degree one million, uh, another polynomial of degree one million, and if the prover has to compute let's say the product of these polynom uh, polynomials, then if we would do it like natively or like natively, like how uh, then we can apply let's say this uh, schoolbook uh, like multiplication. We take the coefficient or let's say the pairs of uh, pairs of coefficients. We multiply them together. And then we take, uh, let's say, some particular uh, products. We add them together, and then we get, uh, let's say, the coefficients of uh, of the product polynomial. And uh, like it's like for peak polynomials, it is infeasible. So like if you have poly uh, polynomials of degree one million, then like it would be like one million times one million uh, like uh, uh, multiplications, and it's like it's just like Im like impossible to do. 
So in 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 many cases, uh, or like uh, like uh, how we can solve it is by doing uh, something called FFTs or entities. So it is uh, uh, number theoretic uh, transformation. So like essentially what it allows to do, it allows to us to fairly efficiently uh, go from uh, go from uh, let's say this um, uh, coefficient form of a polynomial into evaluation form of a polyno uh, polynomial. And if we are in a evaluation form of a polynomial, then we can just uh, multiply the evaluations together, and then we do the inverse entity, and uh, then we get back, uh, let's say, the product polynomial in coefficient form. And uh, yeah, very good. So the, the so the Brewer work is also um, uh, small, also. Uh, like to be able to do that, uh, we need something called uh, like high dualicity. So meaning that we, like we need to have like uh, some very high uh, degree of unity so so that we would be able to do the entity so uh, we have additional re restriction on this uh, elliptic curve uh, what we're working on so that it has to have like this uh, too high identity we also have one more let's say restriction on the elliptic curves uh, what we want to use so they have to be secure so they have to be sufficiently secure that the discrete log uh, logarithm problem in, in the curve itself and let's say in the let's say the, the g2 or like let's say the the, the, the uh, paired uh, group is also like um, uh, is difficult and also like in the in the targets group. So essentially, we have let's say uh, three restriction on this elliptic curve group. So it has to be pairing friendly first. Secondly, it has to have like uh, too high uh, uh, high geodicity, and finally, it has to be uh, it has to be secure. Uh, luckily, uh, like luckily for stocks, uh, there are such uh, elliptic curve groups, and uh, so we we are safe. We can do we can do stocks. But uh, if we want to implement, let's say, if we want to implement uh, some practical applications, for example, if you want to verify ECDS signatures, or if you want to verify RSA signatures, or or if you want to do, uh, for example, PLS signatures, or we want to do like uh, if you want to check. Uh, uh, um, uh, some pairing, uh, uh, like pairing, uh, 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 pairings inside the inside the circuit. Then, uh, like usually, the fields what we are uh, what we are working on in the practical ap applications they differ from uh, let's say the, the the scalar fields of these like useful elliptic curve groups. So there may be like uh, the, like there may be like very small overlap. If we have like uh, some, uh, let's say, two chains or like let's say chains or cycles of curves, uh, in in what cases, uh, let's say the the, the base field uh, or uh, the the scalar field of one elliptic curve is a base field of another elliptic curve. So like essentially in that case, we like we are able to uh, define a snark in, in like in like in in one uh, group. Uh, we compute the the proof and then we can like very efficiently verify it in uh, let's say in this. Uh, uh, outer curve uh, because like essentially all the operations are performed on, on scalar fields and uh, then we can do it like very efficiently but uh, like these use cases are i would say uh, 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 like minor compared to uh, compared to let's say the traditional uh, like cryptography what we want to do what we want to do and so to overcome this problem uh, we have to do something called non-native arithmetic so we have to be able to do an uh, arithmetic which is not native to the scalar field of the elliptic curve and uh, this is what I'm going to explain. Uh, explain. Uh, uh, like there are several ways to do that. So like the, the, the first approach using the Chinese remainder theorem. So uh, it is it is uh, somewhat related to let's say school book uh, multiplication int uh, like integer multiplication and uh, like additionally using like the Chinese remainder theorem like to uh, to to uh, allow for like some let's say uh, checks uh, checks to be done. Uh, I think like this ap uh, approach is used for uh, in 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 uh, uh, in Brettenberg, I think. Uh, then, uh, like second approach is using like this uh, uh, casting out primes or nines approach. I think it, like it was proposed by by Polygon at some point. Uh, then uh, some time ago, uh, uh, I think uh, Zach also like introduced the uh, Goblin Blanc. Uh, so there, like essentially, it is a it is a recursive scheme where let's say that these non-native like operations they are uh, deferred into let's say uh, later iterations of uh, of this recursion and uh, when they can be done like natively or like let's say more easily. So what I'm going to introduce, or like uh, the approach we are taking in Clark, is uh, is uh, using like a XJ Snark style polynomial uh, identity uh, identity testing. So let's look uh, like how we can do that. 
So let's set the let's uh, first uh, set the, let's say the environment uh, we are we are working in. So we have let's say we have the native field uh, which is defined by by, by the scalars of the uh, of the elliptic curve, and uh, let's say the modulus of the native field is uh, is R. And then we have the non-native field, uh, what we want to aim on it. And let's say it, the, its modulus is, is Q. So we are taking, I would say, like very, uh, very straightforward approach. So we are using, like, let's say, let's say this uh, multi-precision uh, integer uh, representation, uh, representation approach. So what we do is that, uh, let's say, like, if we have some, like, long, uh, let's say, if we have some non-native field element, so we look at at it as an uh, like as an integer, and then like if it is an uh, if it is a, lo a long integer, uh, then we can split it up uh, like into let's say into smaller limbs. Uh, so for example, limbs of size uh, sixty four bits, assuming that they like uh, that these limbs like fit into this uh, into the fit into this native field. But they usually do because uh, like uh, this elliptic curve group, uh, uh, the the fields of uh, of uh, good uh, groups. Uh, let's say they, they are usually like 255 bits uh, long. So we we, we fit uh, like nicely. And we also have like, so let's say some some spare room for operations when we do this uh, multi-precision precision integer uh, arithmetic. So in that case, uh, so if we split, the, split it into limbs, uh, then uh, like we can, like let's say from this limb uh, limb representation, go back to this uh, let's say inter integer representation by just uh, uh, yeah, by just uh, like recombining uh, let's say the, the limbs with the co corresponding uh, coefficients, and so we can like shift the limbs back into right places, and we get the the initial integer. Uh, like illustrate like illustratively, like let's say like we have the uh, native field elements, and then we have the limb uh, like limbs non native limbs uh, like in this native elements. So addition, what we have to do. Uh, so like uh, if like if in the beginning, uh, if we split, let's say the non-native element uh, um, uh, into let's say sixty-four bit limbs or like some fixed uh, fixed fixed length uh, limbs, then after some operations, uh, we may happen that uh, let's say the value uh, like we need more bits to represent this value. Uh, so for example, like after after addition, we need one more bit to represent the result of uh, of addition. So Additionally, uh, of keeping uh, track of the uh, of the uh, yeah, of, like of the limbs, we also need to keep track of the overflow of uh, like every limb or like actually like if the if we do op uh, if we do the opera operations like limb wise uh, and if we like group uh, multiple limbs, then like we can use the same overflow for uh, for different limbs. Okay, so let's uh, let's look at the arithmetic. How we can do multi precision arithmetic. Mm. So let's, uh, for now, uh, we just do integer arithmetic. So we do not, uh, we do not consider uh, modular, modular reductions uh, for now. Because like I said, like, we can do it uh, because, uh, so if we do inter like integer arithmetic, so at some point uh, we can reduce, let's say this uh, integer, like which overflows the uh, non-native modulus, we can reduce it back uh, to, to, uh, to the non-native field. And uh, like essentially, we can amortize this uh, this uh, uh, this cost of uh, modular reduction, uh, uh, and it may save us something. So for the for addition, addition is uh, is simple. So we, what we can do is that uh, like essentially, if we have let's say uh, two multi-precision integers, then we just do addition uh, limbwise, and uh, uh, and that's it. So the uh, uh, result. Uh, the limbs of the result, they're just like, uh, let's say, the, the, the sums of the of, of the inputs, and that's it. Uh, for the overflow, uh, like as I said before, uh, the overflow is just uh, one more, uh, what was the like maximum overflow of, of, like, of the inputs. So like this is uh, easy case, and uh, hopefully like everything else is also going to be easy. So let's, uh, let's look at the subtraction. Uh, let's try to have like a very similar similar approach. So we take uh, the multi-precision integer, uh, but then we subtract limb by limb. And now we encounter, I would say, the first problem. Or uh, yeah, the first problem. So like essentially, the problem is that uh, let's say if uh, the value we are subtracting, like if the limb is bigger than the value that we are subtracting from. 
So like this means that we get underflow in the native field, and this like this messes uh, like everything up because like our assumption is that the limbs are of uh, some particular like uh, particular width, and if we uh, like if you underflow, then this assumption doesn't hold anymore. But uh, luckily, we can uh, we can uh, somewhat easily overcome this, uh, uh, this this problem. So like essentially, what we have to do, uh, we have to add uh, we have to add. Uh, something what I at this call uh, subtraction padding. So like this is uh, uh, like particularly uh, constructed value, uh, which is a multiple of non-native field, and uh, like and it is constructed in a way that every limb is strictly larger than the value we are subtracting. So like this means that uh, we 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 do not like underflow the, the native field. So instead of uh, instead of uh, subtraction. Um, we add the subtraction padding and then we do the subtraction uh, limb by limb and uh, then all is good. Now uh, let's uh, let's uh, look at the multi uh, multiplication. Like um, uh, similarly as for uh, polynomial multiplication, uh, we can like we can also do let's say an, uh, some quite na naive. Uh, multi-precision uh, int uh, like integer multiplication. Uh, how it works is that uh, like essentially we have uh, inputs a and b uh, which consists of limbs, and then we have to compute the limbs of the like of the product. And to uh, to compute the limbs of the product, we just have to take the corresponding limbs where the indices add uh, add together to the in uh, index of the limb uh, we are uh, uh, we are computing. And then we like uh, then we take, we compute the product, we add them together, and then we get uh, let's say the limb of the uh, uh, of the product. Like we can see that if the number of uh, let's say if the number of limbs of the inputs is n, uh, then the number of limbs uh, for the result is uh, like is two n. And to compute every limb, uh, like we have to do up to like um, uh, um, up to n uh, multiplications. So this means that uh, like essentially in circuit complexity of uh, multiplication like naively will be n squared. Uh, uh, like it may or it may not not be a problem if if uh, n is small, but uh, let's like let's try to improve this approach uh, sp like specifically for the cases where the field what we want to emulate it is big. So let's say like if uh, if the field we want to emulate is uh, for example several thousand bits. And uh, if we split it into like 64 bit limbs, then like it means that the the, uh, the number of limbs is like it is uh, it's many. And uh, like this uh, the quadratic complexity there like it uh, like it's, it's it's really bad. So the, there was a really nice Sorry, observation. So just, just to clarify your uh, Evo, so that so n here in terms of the you're talking about complexity is is referencing the number of limbs. Is that yes? Okay, cool. Just want yes. to make sure I got it. Um, so what the, the authors of XJ Snark uh, paper uh, like they observed is that uh, like uh, we can also uh, have let's say a polynomial representation of uh, like of a multi precision integer, and so like essentially we have a polynomial where the coefficients are actually the limbs, and like in that case like if uh, if we evaluate this polynomial at uh, like at the basis, at the basis uh, let's say that it is. Uh, uh, multi precision basis then we get back uh, the the uh, like initial integer but uh, for now we like we are just in like interested in, like in the polynomial uh, itself and so what they proposed is that instead of uh, doing let's say in circuit uh, multiplication uh, we compute uh, let's say the, the the limbs of the product uh, outside the, uh, like outside of the circuit like using hints or like non deterministic computation or, or advice like uh, how, uh, however uh, anyone calls it, and then we have to show. Uh, then we have to show that uh, let's say the product of the polynomials uh, uh, corresponds to the product of uh, corresponds uh, like to the resulting polynomial or the polynomial which represents the uh, product of uh, of the input integers. And uh, like usually, like usually, like if we have like this kind of let's say polynomial uh, like relation, we can use uh, like a short simple lemma. So like. Uh, uh, we can evaluate uh, the polyon like polynomials at only at a single point, and then we comp uh, uh, like then we multiply the, the uh, evaluations, and then we just compare like uh, the, that uh, all is good. But we really like uh, I would say by default we really cannot do that. 
because uh, we don't have randomness in circuit. Uh, and that's like, and, uh, but, uh, and, and that's a problem. But uh, luckily, because the number of limbs or num number of limbs, or also the degree of the polynomial, uh, uh, what the, like these multi-precision integers I represent, it is relatively small. Then like, actually we can, uh, uh, we can just evaluate these polynomials at uh, let's say some constants and uh, some small number of constants. So uh, like for degree n polynomial, it is sufficient like uh, that we evaluate them at n plus one uh, points. And then, then we, are, we we have to check uh, like this, uh, the, this relation there. Uh, and what is like really nice in uh, in R1CS, uh, so uh, is that like actually um, a multiplication by constant, it is kind of free. So it doesn't add, let's say, it doesn't add complexity to the, to, to the prover. And uh, also additions are free. So actually, uh, eva like ev evaluating these polynomials, it is like it is free. So we are we are only left with uh, of uh, of this uh, uh, computing the product of the evaluations and also like this assertion. So essentially, it means that per uh, like per um, input value, we only have two constraints what we have to check. And like if the number of lim limbs is constant, so this is uh, like essentially two uh, two n uh, constraints of what we what we have to add. Um, so we get uh, O of n uh, multiplication, uh, multiplication complexity, but this is in uh, R1CS. So in Blanc, uh, uh, in Blanc, uh, it doesn't work that well. I'm sorry. Yeah, in all good. I was actually about to ask that question, which you're saying, but what, can you just describe what the slide when you have T and C apply? I guess what is? Uh, can you just define what that that? Yeah. So. Terms, terms and conditions apply. Ah, so yeah. it doesn't uh, it doesn't uh, apply for Planck because in because in Planck a multiplication by constant isn't free, addition isn't free. So in Planck we are still the multiplication complexity. Let's say the prover complexity is still O of n squared. Uh, so let's uh, let's see like if we can fix it like in, in like in the future. Uh, I also have a I have an equation like how we can compute the overflow of the of the of the product. Uh, so just we can keep it in, in mind. It's not important. Uh, but what is important and what I like very smoothly uh, went over is that uh, like actually we have to uh, also rain check um, the limbs what we got uh, like from the hint because otherwise let's say the brewer provides. Uh, limbs uh, or let's say values which have bigger width uh, than uh, than what is allowed then uh, like if if you would keep track of the overflows then at some point like we can overflow the native field and uh, uh, and uh, we don't have sound circuit anymore so like actually we also have to do the range checks and now finally uh, modular modular uh, re reduction so right now the multiplication was integer multiplication so the resu result is Big, it is a, it's way big. Uh, so we have to uh, like occasionally reduce the uh, this uh, big integers back into like into the into the canonical representation. Um, I say that we can amortize, uh, let's say, uh, multiplication. So we do we do not have to uh, uh, reduce them all the time. But uh, like in practice, like heuristically, uh, at least uh, my experience is that like it always makes sense to reduce after after every multiplication. And, uh, and why like we need to do that essentially is because like uh, the number of limbs, like let's say the number of uh, like input limbs is, is N. So the number of, uh, let's say the result, uh, the number of limbs for the result is 2N. And uh, like if you will multiply two, two N limb uh, integers together, then the, the result has four N limbs. And uh, like uh, it, it, the number of limbs actually grows exponentially and it's not good. Like even if you have like let's say this uh, linear uh, linear mul multiplication complexity, so we should always uh, mod reduce. How uh, like how we are doing mod reduce? So it's uh, like it is also uh, let's say uh, on high level it is uh, simple. So let's say we have some like uh, let's say value which overflows the the, the modulus, and to overflow to mod reduce it, so we have to show. The, that the reduced value, uh, so the difference of the value we, we are reducing and the, and the reduced value, so it is, uh, uh, it is um, let's say, a multiple of the non-native modulus. So let's say that, that, that there has to exist 
alpha such that the, the difference uh, like the difference uh, is uh, alpha times uh, non non native modulus uh, like this um, equality check is for multi uh, multi precision integers meaning that uh, like we have to be able to like uh, check that uh, like two multi precision integers they are equal to each other like somehow let's try doing it uh, limp wise again uh, as we did for addition and uh, subtraction but the, but the problem now like is that uh, let's say the overflows or let's say the excesses of the of the limbs may be different but like actually like this is something what we can solve quite uh, like in a straightforward manner so we can carry uh, the excess uh, excess of a limb which has let's say which is wider uh, to to the next limb so we just partition the wider limbs uh, so that the the results would have the the, the the same width and we carry the excess over to the next limb and so, so and so on and then we can do um, uh, element wise comparison so maybe uh, like one thing what we what we observed is that uh, like if we have let's say this polynomial re representation of the uh, of the uh, uh, elements uh, and also like if we construct a polynomial representation of these excesses or uh, so we have a polynomial where the coefficients are a zero a one and so on uh, then uh, it like then we can check the equality like using this uh, polynomial uh, polynomial uh, relation. So like we have uh, this uh, coefficient, uh, let's say coefficient uh, UB. So it's the basis for uh, multi precision, uh, pre precision integers. So uh, like essentially uh, this multiplication by this uh, uh, constant, like it just shifts uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, value, uh, like uh, let's say to the end of the like to the top bit of uh, like of the limb and like multiplication by x like it just moves the excess uh, to, uh, um, to the next limb so we can have i would say this nice representation for uh, uh, for uh, uh, checking to uh, multi precision integer but as as i said before it makes sense to do multiplication and uh, modular uh, reduction uh, like at the same time so if we combine multiplication, modular reduction, uh, like into, into the same uh, I'll say into the same check, then we get something like this. So we represent the uh, multiple integers as polynomials, uh, and then uh, we have to check uh, this relation uh, on uh, I would say uh, uh, some number of constant points, and uh, then like then like if this holds, then uh, the mul mode is uh, is correct. So, like similar, similarly as for uh, plane multiplication, it is quite good for uh, for R one CS because uh, uh, multiplication by constant is free. Also, addition is free. It is slightly or it's a lot uh, a lot worse in Planck. But uh, like actually, we can avert I would say like some uh, badness in Planck uh, because like we can do a lot of caching. Uh, we can do caching because uh, in a lot of cases. The, let's say the output or, or let's say the, the residue C, it is an input uh, to some other uh, check where it is either A or B. So like actually like we can cache the, this polynomial evaluation. So we are, we usually, we only have to uh, evaluate polynomial C. We have to evaluate uh, this polynomial uh, alpha and also polynomial E. And because the Q is uh, like Q is, uh, it is static over all checks and uh, we cached A and B. So uh, it's 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 not that it's not that bad. It but it's still it could be better. Okay, mm, so we have optimized the mul mod, and uh, actually I would say the result is quite good. So let's say if we have uh, if we have if we work on the PN two five four and we want to emulate the two hundred fifty six bit uh, uh, field like on sixty four uh, bit limbs, then like it's a uh, like in uh, it's approximately I know, 14, uh, let's say uh, 14 constraints uh, like in Planck, uh, like if we like if you if you use caching. So it's it's not that bad. Uh, but uh, like we have to range check. So we got the values or let's say the limbs of uh, of the polynomial uh, uh, C, alpha, and D like from uh, from hint. So we need to range check them. And actually, like if we like if you do naive range checking, uh, then this means that uh, like we have to range check 
or we have to uh, compose uh, like uh, element into bits. We have to show that every bit is actually a bit, uh, like using this uh, this uh, this check. And then we have to show that uh, like these bits add back together uh, like uh, to this value, like what we what we obtained uh, like from the hint. And like in practice, like this is like this is actually like where like most of the cost is. So it doesn't it. Uh, like uh, in like in a big picture, it doesn't like really make sense to optimize, you know, a few constraints like in 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 mul mode. When like in the end uh, for rain checks, we have to do 600, 700 uh, uh, checks like uh, to ensure that uh, what we, what we received uh, from uh, like from from the hints is, is correct. So let's let's try to start optimizing the the, the rain checks. First, uh, we we looked uh, at, uh, at at Ultra Blanc. So Ultra Blanc essentially it is uh, vanilla Blanc with custom gates and Pluka. So uh, what does it mean? Is that like essentially in Ultra Blanc, like it's possible to tag some elements what we want to check in the in I would say in the proof system or that the, the elements, uh, let's say the, the the variables what we had tagged uh, tagged. Uh, they are in somewhat uh, or or in some lookup table, and the lookup table, like uh, what we will construct, is a, essentially a list of all allowed uh, values. So it is uh, from zero to to the uh, to the sixteen or to the sixty four. So whatever is uh, is the width of the of the limbs what uh, we want to allow. We didn't take this, uh, the, we didn't take this approach uh, because uh, like this approach isn't uh, really uh, good with uh, with uh, cross 16 um and uh, for plonk uh, or so it's not good for cross 16 uh, like essentially because uh, i wasn't able to figure out like how to make it work with cross 16 so maybe it's possible i i i wasn't able to figure it out uh, for plonk uh, it would have worked I think it would have worked nicely, but uh, at least my in my impression was that uh, it uh, it would have integrated, let's say, the front end. So let's say the like how we write circuits and the back end. So how the prover computes the proof, uh, like it would have integrated them a bit because, like, essentially we would have to carry over, like, let's say, the, this information about where, what the variables we are uh, we are range checking, like what are the range check values and so on, and uh, so. And we didn't want to do that, so we want to keep the front end and back end somewhat, uh, I would say, somewhat uh, clearly separated. So, uh, for example, uh, like this allows to have, let's say, different front ends for GNARK. So, for example, like there is also like NOR front end for GNARK. So it's possible to write circuit in NOR and uh, prove it in, in in GNARK. And I think it's it's really nice to have like this uh, compatibility. Second approach, uh, what we we looked into is is uh, using uh, something called a permutation network. So we looked into ar arbitrary size Waxman uh, permutation network. And in this approach, uh, what we would have done is that, um, uh, like essentially, if we have uh, some uh, some variables what we want to range check, then we uh, then we fill in uh, the the values uh, what weren't range checked in the, let's say, in the allowed uh, range. Then we permute all these range checked values into, into order. And then like uh, after the permutation network, if the variables are all in, uh, let's say, in increasing order, then we can add constraint that uh, like every uh, sequential uh, uh, value is either the previous one or uh, one more than the previous one, and then like uh, then if all these uh, uh, constraints hold, then it also means that the inputs uh, were also uh, all in uh, let's say in this permitted range. Uh, actually, we implemented implemented this approach, but um, uh, it didn't give uh, I would say significant improvement. Uh, so uh, it didn't give significant improvement in, in, in the sense of uh, the number of constraints, uh, what we have like in circuit. And also uh, it was quite difficult uh, to compute, uh, let's say the values of the switches. If uh, like every switch in the permutation network either swaps or uh, doesn't swap uh, the, the, the wires. So it uh, the overhead was quite significant. And so finally, uh, we we uh, thought about like using let's say a multiset uh, multiset uh, uh, equality check using uh, a logarithmic derivative argument. Uh, uh, this present result, 
but for this like we need like uh, for this we need randomness and uh, like and in this approach so let's say we have a, a lookup table and in the lookup table we have all the permitted values so they're all values in the in the, like in the range uh, what we want to range check uh, in so uh, these uh, values in the in the tables are fi's and then we have the histogram so like how many times every value in this table is uh, is queried like these are these uh, let's say uh, 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 coefficients uh, or let's say the the histogram k k k i's and finally we have the uh, lookup uh, sj's but for for this to work like we have like we need to have some randomness or we need to have let's say random verifier challenge and um, like how like how can we solve how can we get a verifier random verifier challenge which depends on some like on some inputs so very i would say a very um, uh, straightforward approach would be to use like fiat Shamir and fiat Shamir in circuit um, uh, so and like how like how it would work is that like essentially let's say we would hash all the inputs into like uh, into this uh, 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 Fiat Shamir, and uh, then we get some random challenge. We we use this random challenge, and all is good. the The problem with uh, this approach is that uh, like actually like hashing in circuit is expensive. So uh, like if uh, the let's say the cost of hashing uh, like in circuit it depends on the number of inputs uh, like uh, the, to to hash, and it's uh, like it is at least. I would say a few hundred uh, constraints, uh, like per input, and so it doesn't like really make sense. So it's uh, so uh, like compared to this uh, 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 log derivative argument itself, like the cost of doing fiat Shamir in circuit, like it was like uh, it was too expensive. So it it didn't make any sense. So maybe we can do fiat Shamir outside of the circuit. So like essentially the prover would uh, just provide, let's say, the the the, the elements to to hash to the verifier, the verifier computes the uh, fiat Shamir challenge, and uh, like this challenge can be used like in circuit uh, like uh, as a randomness. But uh, this puts a very big cost uh, for the verifier, and also like uh, it causes uh, it causes uh, a privacy loss. So because the prover has to provide all the inputs to the verifier to to to, to compute the fiat Shamir challenge, and so uh, uh, like. In 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 for something unrelated like uh, we 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 were using like uh, uh, the Lego Snark uh, uh, style commitments and uh, like actually we uh, we realized that uh, this is something uh, what we can use. So what is uh, Lego Snark uh, style uh, commit and carry scheme? Like essentially, it is an uh, it is an extension of Cross sixteen, where it's possible to let's say commit. To, to some values, uh, let's say witness, uh, like witness element values, uh, like uh, and uh, to use this commitment in some other circuit. So essentially, it it allows to modularize uh, different uh, cross sixteen uh, instances and to share some witness values, like between let's say these different uh, different modules, yeah, um, modules. Uh, but we, what we realized that uh, like actually like this commitment can be used as uh, as uh, let's say it is a very far challenge inside the circuit. So Lego Snark. So what is the difference between cross sixteen and uh, and uh, let's say augmented cross sixteen as defined uh, in Lego Snark paper? So like essentially in uh, vanilla cross sixteen we have the proof elements a, a, a B and C, and uh, they added uh, like add additional uh, uh, elements D and D prime. Where D is actually like it is uh, very similar to C, so essentially it's splitting C uh, computation of C like into parts, and uh, the D prime uh, this is necessary to to be able to uh, for the prover to show that uh, the prover actually used let's say the um, uh, the proving key or let's say the commitment key for computing this D. Uh, the verifier work. Uh, what what, uh, 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 what is different from uh, like from vanilla cross sixteen is essentially um, uh, what uh, one scar multiplication, one addition, and one more pairing check. So it's one like uh, the most it cost is one additional pairing check. So the commitment. So like we saw that actually it is a Peterson uh, vector commitment scheme. And uh, with uh, with the part of the proving key 
uh, as as a basis uh, for the commitment scheme. Um, and uh, so the security in the paper, as like as I understood, or at least uh, how I uh, how I um, uh, like I'm imagining it, imagining it is that this, like essentially that uh, this let's say this augmented cross sixteen it is very similar to cross sixteen, and if uh, if the commitment won't be binding. Then this also means that the, the, this uh, the initial cross sixteen instance, like uh, it, it would be possible to compute, uh, let's say, multiple witnesses uh, to a particular, uh, let's say, circuit instance. So it means that the, the circuit itself wouldn't be sound. So if the circuit is sound, if it is well defined, then it means that also the commitment itself it is binding. Additionally, the prover is not able to, uh, let's say, predict. The, uh, the commitment because like the, this uh, this would mean that the prover uh, would be able to solve discrete law so it is a very good uh, very good uh, I would say uh, uh, thing to use uh, for for a challenge in like inside the circuit the prover does the the work anyway uh, and uh, it is only a single element uh, what uh, like what uh, what we add to, to the proof so uh, additionally what we have to do is that we have to hash uh, this uh, let's say group element into into the scalar field, uh, and uh, then we can use it as uh, as additional public input. I promised in the description that uh, like this technique, I would say on high level, also works for Planck. So not uh, not pre not precisely uh, like using this uh, let's say augmented uh, scheme as in cross sixteen, but essentially for Planck, what, like what we did is that uh, we created a custom gate. Where we mark some variables uh, to be committed to, and then uh, we represent like these variables as a polynomial, uh, uh, and uh, the commitment to it we use as uh, as a random challenge inside the circuit. So if we have let's say randomness inside the circuit, what can we do? Uh, so uh, first of all, uh, we can extend this uh, single commitment uh, into multiple commitments. Uh, uh, so like in essence we can compute multiple commitments uh, like inside the, uh, like using this um, uh, commitment carry scheme but we do not really want to do that because like the, this would mean that like every additional commitment what we compute in like in, in the proof system it uh, requires additional uh, pairing check by the verifier so we can do uh, we can we can extend the commitment inside the circuit like using caching we just split the commitment into let's say uh, domain separated uh, like uh, values or we can use it, for example, for folding uh, like inputs, uh, uh, what we are um, like using in the in the lookups. Or we can also like we can construct using this log derivative argument in like in addition to uh, let's say in addition to uh, range checks, we can do like arbitrary uh, table lookups. And uh, like using these table lookups, we can also do let's say in, uh, uh, boolean functions. So we we pre-compute uh, the the uh, let's say the, the full table of some like Boolean function on let's say eight bit inputs and we uh, pre-populate this table and then we can instead of doing the computation we just look up the values and also like uh, we can fix the problem or let's say the quadratic uh, complexity problem of uh, mul mode uh, in Blanc uh, because like now we have a random challenge and so instead of uh, needing to do uh, multiple uh, checks uh, in in Blanc we can only do it uh, on 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 this random uh, like random value. And so in Planck, uh, we also have now uh, linear complexity, uh, let's say, linear uh, complexity to check the uh, uh, modular multiplication. So uh, from practical point of view, so let's say the protocol itself is sound, but we also want to, like in Knark, we wanted to make it, uh, let's say, sound for the users to, to write circuits in. So we have range checks here and there, uh, for example, uh, we have to range check the inputs, we have to range check the outputs, we have to range check the let's say, values provided by the, uh, by the hints. So we hide, like, we hide all this complexity and uh, like, uh, like even more. So uh, we don't just hide it, we do not allow the users to, let's say, avoid some range checks of what needs to be done. So at least, uh, let's say from from some uh, GitHub issues or like some uh, some discussions. So like uh, people were proposing like removing some checks, like to have more efficient uh, prover time. But uh, like we want to completely avoid like uh, uh, to 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 prevent some some checks to be done. So inst like instead of uh, like having something like this, we just 
do everything automatically. So we track all the inputs, uh, for example, and if some input, uh, let's say uh, non-native input is encountered in some operation, then you automatically range check all the inputs, uh, uh, like what have to be range checked. So for like for the user, like it, it should be like really straightforward. Um, uh, in regards of, uh, let's say, uh, composability, let's say we have uh, multiple instances of ECDSA, we have like several uh, non-native fields we are emulating. Uh, so <clears throat> like everywhere we have to, let's say, do the range checks and every, like every, everywhere we have to initialize the, uh, the, uh, this uh, range checker gadget. And uh, like finally we have to fin uh, like finalize, we have to compute, let's say, this log derivative argument uh, so that uh, like everything is sound. We added, uh, I'll say, some some lazy methods so that uh, everything is done automatically. The let's say range checking instances are cached, so every time, uh, like uh, somewhere we need range check, then actually like we are collecting everything into one big let's say instance, and so that uh, this allows to optimize the range checks what we have to do because. Um, there is some, I would say, constant overhead of initializing a range table, which is uh, constructing the, the the let's say the left hand side of the log derivative argument. And uh, finally, uh, we also do, let's say, automatic table size computation. So depending on the number of uh, range checks, uh, the size of the range, check, uh, range checks, uh, we automatically compute like what is the uh, what is the width uh, we are range checking. So like usually, like uh, like if we need to range check sixty four bits, then uh, like we cannot uh, like we cannot build table of size sixty four bits. So uh, due to the sixty four bits, so like actually we uh, partition like these inputs into let's say into smaller groups and then we range check the range check the smaller groups and we also assert that these groups add back together to this uh, value what we are range checking and uh, uh, like if we are like if we can optimize the size of the lookup tables then it means that the, like the, the, the these groups or partitions are larger and then, then we have like lesser partitions and then we have uh, lesser constraints what we have to add so finally um, uh, benchmark wise or like, let's say runtime wise uh, like uh, I think like the, the first thing to keep in mind is that it's 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 not really it doesn't really make sense to compare the number of constraints because like every I would say like every uh, snark framework is, is slightly different and like it, it's it's not possible to have like let's say apples to apples comparison if we just kind of like compare the constraint numbers so I think I, I think it's like really good uh, like initiatives where um, let's say the where uh, like different snark frameworks are compared to each other like uh, on the same systems on the same uh, same uh, types of circuits on the same uh, same uh, groups and so on and so that it it would uh, be uh, it will, uh, so it's possible to like have some kind of like comparison like who like who is good in like in in what aspect but like just for uh, just for completeness I yesterday I I, I ran like some benchmarks uh, like using all these these techniques and uh, like these are uh, some results uh, like what I had on like on my Mac. So uh, we 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 proved everything on PN254 and uh, like this is time for like solving the witness and also like proving. So for ECDSA or uh, or let's say uh, Bitcoin curve or uh, Bitcoin uh, curve or like, Ethereum curve, it's uh, like approximately approximately 1.3 seconds and so on. So uh, you can see in, in the table. I also I tried running the benchmarks for Blanc, but uh, like when like after the after the second benchmark, I realized that uh, I had like introduced some like uh, let's say memory some some issue in the in the Blanc prover. So like actually like these uh, uh, runtimes they were a bit off, so I didn't complete the the, the, the benchmarks. And uh, like hopefully we get we get the the the, the Blanc prover fixed soon, and then we can we can also provide the benchmarks for uh, Blanc backend. And that's it. Thanks. Thanks for listening. A quick question. Sorry on the slide. <clears throat> what is the number in parentheses? Uh, so there the are number of constraints. Uh, ah, okay. So that's like that constraint number. Gotcha. Okay. But yeah, just, yeah. Not, okay. Cool. Awesome. Very people, helpful. People like to compare the number of constraints, okay. but uh, yeah, I don't yeah, like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess it's maybe useful within the context of a single proof system, as opposed to like across proof systems, maybe. Yeah. Uh, so like it makes it makes kind of sense for R one CS, because you know for R one CS you cannot do like a lot of trickery. Uh, it doesn't make any sense for Blanc because like you have custom gates, you have you know whatnot. So it it doesn't really make for Blanc that much. Awesome. Well, Evo, this is a great 
Uh, this is a great presentation. Thank you very much for sharing this. I mean, again, I, I like this because there's a lot of, this is very applied in terms of practical problems. I mean, I think we talk a lot about theory uh, in this in this, in this this group and that's obviously very important as well, but but application is uh, is equally important. So, and obviously you have ZPRIZE highlighted here, which is another initiative that I run. And I think Gautam is on the call and, and you guys worked on a, uh, you know, the Gnarc team in general submitted a, a very good submission which I, I don't know how much of that submission was based on this presentation, but it was the winning submission for the mobile MSM prize. And I guess I do want to just mention that for this coming year, we're actually having a uh, signature verification category for ETDSA SEC B two five six K one um, to be you know for uh, inside of a inside of a Marlin snark um, Marlin plus plus. Technically, we have a new a slight tweak to the proof system. Maybe Pratish can mention some of those tweaks um if he's interested but in general this is very relevant for this year's z prize i think this is one of the things we want to focus on so hopefully you'll be able to you'll have a chance to apply some of this knowledge in, in that context um i have a bunch of questions but i'll pause and see if anyone else wants to add a comment ask a question the floor is open Okay, maybe I'll ask my question then to kick things off. Uh, here, let me see if I can get back. I need to fix the view options real quick. Okay, great. Now we can all just make sure all the all the cameras are in the right spot here. Okay, great. Um, my question was going to be, you, you're talking, uh, well, is one way to think about this as an optimization problem? I guess one way to think about this is as an optimization problem. And one question that I have is, are, are you really trying, is the, core improvement here about reducing this the number of limbs or is that not relevant to actually having a higher performance i guess i'm trying to like map back to the earlier parts of the presentation about you know the limbs and how many limbs and the potential complexity which grows in the number of limbs so is it really about reducing the number of limbs or is it about other techniques that that really make that dominate the problem uh, I I think like it's a let's say the complexity is dominated by by, by the range uh, range checks. It like yeah. like even if like even if the if we do like let's say this table based range checks, then uh, like it's still like it's still a majority of the cost. So it's uh, uh so when like when I I have tried out, then like uh, for example uh, uh so for example for ECDSA uh, over like uh, SecP two five six K one so like actually it makes more sense or it, it's slightly better like if you have four limbs like compared to three so like theoretically uh, we can fit into like three limbs uh, but in practice uh, it doesn't give better results because uh, so uh, for example like for addition uh, like uh, it still makes sense to amortize the modular uh, reductions and uh, let's say if we have let's say uh, more room so if we are using like 64 bit uh, limbs then actually like we have more rooms uh, to do let's say uh, like these amortized operations before before we have to uh, model reduce so it is like slightly 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 better uh, like if you use four limbs uh, than uh, if you are using uh, three limbs uh, but uh, like there is, there is a like a small difference Gotcha. So it sounds like it's a little more complex, but the range checks is really the dominating factor here. One other question that I have, and I think it's actually kind of answered by this slide of benchmarks, but I was going to ask how, uh, how specific, um, you know, to each non different type of non-native operation is any given implementation here. So I guess like how general are these techniques when applied across all non-native arithmetic operations you could imagine, as opposed to like specifically, sec p two five six k one like are you do you imagine like or i guess i'm i'm just trying to understand like the level of specificity um that goes into each one of these implementations or is this just kind of a general technique that works across the board it looks like from these benchmarks that it seems like there is quite a bit of variation depending on the specific arithmetic that you're doing but i'm curious your thoughts there so actually actually it's like that was like that was our goal so like uh, so when i when i looked at the outside like other implementations then i would like at least my impression was that for example for ECDSA, like they were like really tailor like tailor made for uh, secv 256k1 um and uh, like our approach like it is completely general so like for example like if i show like uh, if i show like these slides so like uh, we can like really easily like initialize let's say this uh, non-native arithmetic on like on every field uh, so uh, what we have to define is the number of limbs 
uh, like how many bits uh, or like how many bits we need to like uh, to represent each limb and uh, what's the modulus and that's it so like actually we we, we are also tracking uh, we are also tracking like if the module is, uh, is 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 prime or not so we can also do let's say we can also do like ring operation so we, if we don't have like inversions or like divisions so we can do like a, like any kind of uh, field well, I, I i i haven't tested on uh, let's say very big uh, on very big fields but at least uh, like let's say um, um uh, like like i i think it also works up to let's say 4k like bit modulus like it's slow but it should work uh, but for example like like uh, what it works for like uh, it definitely it works for i think for uh, ptl 6 uh, 671 uh, i think so it's uh, like it has uh, 688 one bit uh, limbs so like for that it works and it's uh, actually like it's 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 quite good got it so actually so it turns out what so i guess what you're saying is the opposite of what i was saying which is that really what it sounds like this work is really about generalizing a lot of very specific techniques that had been applied in different problem instances before yep yep and uh, like if you look at the let's say the equation what we're checking so like we have like let's say this non native modulus and uh, we are just like replacing this one and uh, like theoretically like theoretically so right now like we like we fix it at compile time like but it like it isn't a, like, I would say a, an assumption we can also like do it uh, let's say runtime so it's uh, so in the context of let's say of CKEVM for example we can like, we can use the same approach for for model modular exponentiation and in that case we just take the queue like from the let's say from the from the mod call uh, uh, pre compile call and we 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 can use it like as is like it has slightly more complexity, but uh, but uh, like not much. Got it. Um, and then the last question I have is what what we talk. You, you know, you have like the benchmarks in terms of latency, and you mentioned using an M one. But I guess there's some discussion in here around caching values and stuff. And so I'm curious, like, what's the memory profile look like? I mean, is memory come up as a constraint at all, or is the is is the bottleneck entirely on the on the on the computing side or on the execution side? Uh, it is on the like uh, it's like when we when we are proving so like actually let's say uh, like we separate let's say we have the front end we have the back end so like all this stuff happens like in the front end so like we do the all the let's say this uh, this uh, let's say caching so like uh, like what does it mean that uh, we cache so like uh, like like essentially like uh, like if we cache something like then let's say in constraint system it means that like actually we are just referencing to like some previously known variable uh and uh like it doesn't it is something so you're, like, not, so you're uh, not talking about caching in terms of like memory you're actually just referring yeah. it to inside okay gotcha okay that's the helpful okay. clarification yeah so this so this is not so i guess maybe just as ask more specifically this is not a met like you know applying these techniques you're, you're this is not really memory you're not memory constrained effectively this is this is really um no uh, these techniques are uh, like aren't so like if you have let's say like if you have like very big circuits like in like in Blanc, then uh, like uh, our let's say memory uh, like we are memory bound by like fts so right. uh, but that's 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 independent of like this work though this is just about that's yep. like not the context of Blanc. okay cool that's helpful yep. um Awesome. Thank you. This is really super cool stuff. Like I said, I'm excited. I mean, obviously given, like I mentioned already, my interest in ZPRIZE, I'm excited to see more work like this come out. And I think it really is going to help. This is like the practical stuff that moves the space forward. So thank you very much for working on this, Gautam. I know you you probably um, are, are on the call. You probably you know, contributed or at least reviewed some of this too. So thank you. And uh, I guess maybe Gautam, actually, since I just referenced you and you're here, do you have any uh, anything else to add uh, to the presentation? Any, any just personal comments about this work. Uh, if you'd like to add anything, feel free. Nope, can't turn on his mic, classic. Um, well, anyway, uh, it is important to note that I guess maybe for folks who are gonna watch this YouTube video later, Gautam Botrell, also on the Consensus Canark team, um, you know, and and a great contributor to, uh, to ZPRIZE, as I mentioned already. Uh, before we conclude, does anyone else have any questions? Comments? Oh, I think there's some chat. I don't know. Oh, all right. Now it's just got to be saying hi. Okay. Well, Evo, thank you very much. This is awesome. Um, uh, thank you for coming and presenting at today's CK Study Club. And uh, I guess, do you have any parting words before we conclude? Or actually any, maybe, maybe actually, maybe actually I'll just turn this into a final question. Um, where, where are the horizons from here? What's the next step? How do we get this down to being even more performant or, or make this, this even more performant? 
Mm, working progress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a yeah. trial, trial, and, trial and error. Uh, there aren't uh, like different answers. So it's like we are we're trying out like five different things like uh, like at the same time because you know uh, most of things doesn't work. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, cool. Well, hopefully next time we have you back on, we'll 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 know what the uh, what the most fruitful of those five directions uh, will have been. So. Um, Okay, great. Well, Evo, thank you very much for being here. Really appreciate it. And thank you everyone for, uh, for tuning in.